Hi, good morning. I am Ife of Ife360 TV and I am back with another video. Today I am talking about Chinese, well my experience being in China, and natural hair. But before we get started, I want you to hit subscribe to become a growth challenger. Because on this channel we talk about DIYs, we talk about natural hair, we talk about health and how it impacts your natural hair. But today we're just talking about Chinese and my experience and have how it's been in China so far. So right now I'm sharing my post so that we can get some more live chatters in here, some natural curly girls. Let's see who we can get. Curly hair. All right, cool. So I just posted this on Twitter. And that's one thing I never asked you to do before. And I don't ask you to share on share on your Facebook profile, your Twitter and your Facebook profiles and stuff. Um, I feel as though I need to clean this, this camera. Hey, thank you for joining me. All right, so, so far I've been living in China for almost, how long now? Almost, almost two years. And I've lived in, this is my second city I've moved to. Uh, so I lived in the more southern, the first, when I first moved here the first year, I lived in the more southern part of China. And uh, in that part, where I also lived was very rural. <laughs> it was only it's about 600,000 people. That's considered rural in China because most cities are 10 million. 5 million and more, but where I lived was 600,000 and the people who lived there, they didn't have much exposure to people who look like me and darker because Chinese tend to go for, even if they are naturally uh, light brown, they tend to try to stay out of the sun. So you can't really tell their true complexion because they avoid the sun. They try not to get their skin darker than a certain shade, and then they use these lightning creams, and that's a whole other story. But my point is, they're not used to people of a darker complexion. But anyway, so I kind of stuck out when I was there. Whenever, and this is, and this is the rural town I'm talking about, they, of 600,000 people, they tended, they, it was more, how to put it, very few people, very few foreigners lived there, and very few people who looked like me and darker lived there. Thank you so much for joining. If you're joining for the first time, please give a thumbs up. Thank you so much so that YouTube could know you're enjoying the stream so far. All right. So yeah. So when they saw me, I would always get stares from them. They would always... And I felt like an alien when I lived there. At first, I didn't mind the staring and the pointing. They would literally point. You know, in the West, certain things that we consider to be rude, they do in China. So they would see me passing by and usually I would actually have my hair braided like this. So it's not really my hair they're looking at. They're lo usually looking at my skin color and they would be pointing and be, they would stop and point. And, and like their mouth would be like open like this. I'm not even joking. That's what, that's how they were in, in um, that town. And uh, at first it was okay, I didn't mind, yeah, whatever. They would stop and take pictures and they would... <laughs> Thank you much for coming in, guys. Thank you much, so much. Thank you to my 360 family. Thank you for joining. Yeah, so they would stop take pictures. They would be riding their motorcycle and they'd be trying to take pictures at the same time while driving past. And yeah, it was like a circus sometimes. And at first you don't mind it, but after a while, God, it gets on your nerves. But talking about hair... So that, I was just talking about skin complexion, but with regard to hair in China, natural hair, I never really liked the attention that it drew. So I always kept my hair braided like this so that it wouldn't draw much attention because even when I would teach students and I was teaching grade seven, six, six, seven, eight, grade seven and eight, I believe. And... Uh, they were what age? They were probably 11, 12, 13, somewhere there. And I would not have my hair out. But the one day, y'all, the one day I was like, all right, I feel like having a braid out or a twist out. And I walk in class, y'all, everybody would just be like, oh my gosh, teacher, teacher. 
that's what they would say. These young kids, teacher, teacher, you here? And my entire, the entire 45 minutes I'm teaching these students, they'll be like, jaws dropped, mouth open, crazy. Crazy. So, um, I, I, I didn't really like too much of that attention, so I didn't really have my hair out all the time. And in this school, they had grade 7, 8, 9. I only taught grade 7 and 8. So, the one, sometimes some of the grade 9s, I never taught them. So, whenever they would see me in the hallway, they would look the Sometimes, I mean, if I'm walking down the hallway, students would run out of their classrooms and stand by the door, like, while I'm walking down the hallway. It, it was crazy, all. The reactions that my hair would give if I'm having... If I have my hair in a braid out, it was unbelievable sometimes to me because why? Okay, so someone's asking me, why are they so fascinated with different hair types? Because they don't know anything differently. They don't know anything but their hair. Remember Chinese, I'm living in China, they only have straight ha hair. They only know straight hair and they only know, that's all they know. And you would think they would be exposed to so different differences and diversity on the internet or on TV. However, I don't know if you all know, but China is like locked down with regard to internet access. I'm not locked down, but Chinese are. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have access to certain websites. So in China, they block Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh... YouTube, YouTube is blocked as well. So all these things are where you would see diversity, where you would see things that are different from you or your experiences. They don't get the chance because they have only like a tunnel vision of what the government allows them to see, right? Uh, so when they see something different than what they're exposed to, it's like mind-blowing. And what it, what is even worse now... Sometimes I don't take that argument as uh, true because they all know about... And I'm like, you know what the NBA is? You see people of uh, different shades and colors and backgrounds and races on the NBA. But when you see me, like, why are you so shocked? I don't, I don't understand. So anyways, um, however, they don't see... Okay, so I kind of do understand their fascination too because they don't see it in person. So even though they would have seen it uh, even though they would have seen it on television or sometimes some of the websites that they may have access to, when they see someone in person of color or different hair texture or a darker complexion than theirs, they are so, like, it's mind-blowing for them. They st I'm telling you, they would stop whatever they are doing. Pull out their camera, stick it in your face, and take pictures of you. Or they would sometimes sneak... I saw a guy riding on a bicycle trying to sneak and ride and take a... I'm like, yo, try not to get in an accident, <laughs> you know? So that's one of the things that uh, was... I mean, I was warned about it. I researched it. I saw people's um, recollection and their their description of what ex their experiences were like over here in China. So I sort of knew what to expect. However, when you're in it, it's like a totally different experience to see how they react to someone who's not like them. So, so that's one of the things that was shocking for me, especially when I first moved to China. And uh, after a while, I don't know, it was a small town. As I said, it was 600,000, which is considered small, <laughs> you know. And that, that sort of experience where they are never, they have never been exposed to anyone different. Being like, feeling like an alien, like you're really, like people, you call a foreigner, but you really feel foreign. <laughs> like you, that's like the real foreign experience, right? So now I've moved. I moved, that was the first city I lived in. The second city I moved to here. Uh, where I live now, which is more a northern city. It's also a more, huh, how do I call it? They call it, they actually, the, what do you call it? The, 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 the oh gosh, what's it? Oh, the marketing term they have for this province is called Friendly Shandong. So the province is called Shandong. 
It's actually everywhere. The marketing is called Friendly Shandong, and it's very true. Here, everyone is very friendly, very warm. Like, the city I was living in before, y'all, they were rude as F. <laughs> rude. But this town, they're very friendly, very warm, very kind, very thoughtful. They no longer stick their phones in my faces. They don't take me on in this town. I, I love it because they do not. They ignore me. I like being ignored. Oh, this is the one time. This is the one time in my life I'm like, God, oh, thank you. I'm being ignored. Thank you. <laughs> so they totally disregard. Like I, I'm like one of them because they the way we look, we actually have similar complexions because it's they they're in the sun here more. They don't really avoid the sun in this city that much. It's also close to an international city, uh, where a lot of foreigners they are exposed to them. They see them often. So seeing me isn't much of a difference. Although when I do take my hair out sometimes, some kids are like scared to death. Like, like they are terrified of my hair sometimes when I take it out. Because I don't know if it's like what the wild hair, they don't... Although I saw a homeless man once and I was like, wait, his hair was really matted. And I was thinking, I'm like, wait, do they think my hair is like matted? Like I don't wash my hair or something because of the texture? Is that why they look at my hair so strangely? Sometimes they laugh at my hair. They snicker sometimes, but sometimes you have to like let that roll off your back and just not take it on. Just ignore it, you know? So let me see. Do you all have any questions about natural hair and being in China so far? So now I'm going to jump into your comments now that I've covered that. So now my experience, so just to wrap it up, my experience now living in China, well, this city, that's the thing I have to tell you. Being in a different province, a different city, your experiences are different depending on where you are, they depending on their exposure and who they've seen before and who they've never seen before, that determines what your your experience would be as well when you get to when you get to China. So those are some of the things that you have to take into into consideration. Not all the time do you do you have the ex will you will you have the same exact experience as, as I did you know it really depends on where you live what city you live in what province you live in so let me see if I could answer some of your questions I, I hope you like the topic I was really hoping that it would be an interesting topic today so Janine Petit hello hi there Rosin is back 360 live crew I missed you K naturally quality cuteness hi girl Yes, I'm glad you caught me live. Nato B is back, my day one. Love it. My regulars. Ah, found bomb. Yes. Uh, Ali Joseph, newbie from Barbados. Thank you for coming back. Celine, hey girl. Oh, I have you up late. Oh gosh. It's late. It's late. I know, I know. I won't. I'm trying my best to try. I'm trying my best to keep the live streams at 30 minutes because I know it's a Friday night. You all want to go relax and stuff. Um. Marquez, yes. So yeah, so you asked about their fascination with different hair types because they're just not used to it. They're not they're not used to seeing people who don't look like them. When you come to China, you literally see Chinese faces all day long. So I have a quick little story for you. The the first city I lived in, as I said, it was r rural, <laughs> and uh, guys, I saw nobody other than Chinese. I was losing my mind at one point. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, this is like a few months into it now. So maybe oh, five, six months. And one day, you all, I saw a, guy, a dark skinned guy. I was like, oh my gosh, someone who looks like me. Well, he was not looking like me. He was much darker. But I just connected instantly. I was like, yes, somebody who is not Chinese for once. Variety. That's how you feel when you see someone different for the first. Oh, God. So now I kind of understand how they sort of feel when they see someone different. Because you imagine you see Chinese faces all day long for your life, for 40 something years of your life, 80 something years of your life. Because remember the town I lived in too, there were a lot of older, um, elderly people in the 70s and 80s. They ne you know what does you never, ever in your life, you see someone else other than your race, other than your features, who look nothing like you. So you can imagine why, I mean, I understand why they would be fascinated or why they would be like so shocked and surprised by seeing some, a foreigner, you know. 
or they only see them on TV and probably would never have believed in their life they would have seen someone different. All right, so yeah, they definitely need variety, as Janine said. So Rosalind also said, hey, another rest. Rosalind says she's Bayesian too. She said 360 crew. Spanarel says, hey, have you ever experienced hardcore racism? Now, I tell you all, I don't know enough Chinese to understand all that they say. However, I have heard some foreigners say that this is not for ev this is not everyone. This is not ev this doesn't happen all the time. However, I've heard some foreigners say like once they learn Chinese and they do understand what they're saying sometimes, they're not saying sometimes they're not saying some nice things. So sometimes I kind of feel like, okay, maybe it's kind of good I don't know a lot of Chinese. I know a little bit, but not enough to understand everything that they're saying. So if they're saying something racist or being, if now with regard to experiencing like r real racism, okay, with regard to getting a job, like when you're looking for, I got a job through a recruiter, so I already knew that I would get a job. I have to explain that. Does that make sense? I already knew that there wouldn't be discrimination. There's more discrimination than racism. Well, let me explain and then you can decide what it is. So... <clears throat> With regard to getting a job here, when you start looking for a job to come to China, which is actually really easy to do, by the way, when you start looking for a job, you would start to see some very ignorant posts that say white people only, or they would say, we only want from the US, UK, Australia, New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. Uh, or we want white faces, or we want this and that. Now, there's still an ignorant side of China with regard to hiring, where they think white is right, or they think that only white people know English, or... Because some some companies that I applied to at first, they, when I told them I, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, they were like, oh, well, we don't want someone from there because um, we don't know if you speak English. I'm like, you need to read, darling. So I had, so, but anyways, the company that, that, that helped me get a, get a job over here, they knew Trinidad, and Trinidad is a, an English-speaking country, so it was not a problem for me. However, um, with regard to the racism thing and the discrimination, they're slowly, they're slowly starting to understand that, hey, not everyone who speaks English is not, um, not only white people speak English, also people of color or pe there are people of color in America who are born in America and American. You know all the stories I have? They think that um, African Americans are not American. I've heard stories where they think that if you speak, like, they don't believe that African Americans speak English. Look, let me not go into this. This is too much. I can't. I can't. I'm not. You know, that's another, that's another live stream. That's not this one. <laughs> Another live stream. Yo yo, seven hi girl. Hey yo yo. They have a hard life. Hmm. That's relative. It depends. It depends on where you go <laughs> in China. Uh so Marquez says you can't live there you can't live here in China. I will be honest, when I before I moved here, I said the same thing. I was like, yo, I don't think I could live here. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I don't think when you come here though. For some people, most people, you start to adjust. You start to you start to figure out how to live. You figure out how to survive, and have a good life here too. You know. Yo, you said it sounds like communism. Yeah, it is a communist country. Ooh, what's this? I have a little lint in my hair. What's that? Okay. In the Asian culture, most of them stick to themselves. Um, not really. Some of them are becoming more progressive. And as I said, this town. Is very that's what I'm telling you. This town is very different. Even the students. Let me talk about that. The students. Oh, this is not even about hair. Sorry, I'm kind of going on a tangent. But the students are even different. I'm like students are smoking in my my last school. Ooh, they were so strict because they were such a rural school that they wouldn't they wouldn't dare cross their parents. That was the first school I was at. This school, they dressing how they feel like smoking. I caught two girls smoking in the in the in the restroom. I scored, um, these, some of these kids, like the boys, they leave my class sometimes and say they're going for a bathroom break. No, they go to any bathroom to take a cigarette smoke, cigarette break. I'm like, these kids, I, these kids are on a different level. Some of the things that these Chinese do, like they're not supposed to really live with their partner until they're married. Like in this city, they do that. 
my last city, they wouldn't dare do that. So it depends on where you go and live that they stick to each other. So I find as though the culture here in this city and this town and this pro well, I say I should say this town, the city. They they have adopted a lot of American culture. The previous city I lived in, they stuck to the Asian culture, stuck to it. Also, here I've realized people are open to, to meeting foreigners here than my previous school and city. Here, they want to know about your culture. They want to know about your experiences. They even ask me about slangs and terms they would have seen on TV. That sort of thing. So they're opening up. And, and as I said, it depends on what city and province you, move, you live in. They are very open to getting to know you better. Okay? Naptiro90 says, I love you, Ife. I love you too. Rosan also said, Japanese are more receptive than Chinese. A lot of Japanese love reggae music. Yes, definitely. I haven't been to Japan yet, but hopefully soon. Okay, by the way, your last video about why you never relaxed your hair was hilarious. Oh my gosh, it's a true story. <laughs> oh gosh, Japanese like reggae? No way. Yeah, they do. There's a huge Japanese culture. They love soca music too from Trinidad. They love soca. I think they have a Jap Japan has a Trinidad carnival. I need to check that out someday. Amanda Lewis. Oh, my lips are dry. I'm so sorry. I'm talking on here with chap lips. Mm. Amanda Lewis says, yes, finally I'm here. Hey, from Dominic. Oh, I want to go Dominica so bad to do whale watching. All right. Joy Davis says, "Some. oh, what did you say? You retracted your statement. I'm so sorry. In the house. Yes, they do. Sorry, guys. I, I'm not getting to your answer your questions fast enough. I'm trying. I'm trying. So, uh, the, the, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Roslyn said the dance hall queen from Japan was um Japanese. That's excellent. Okay. Sorry. Let's get back to here now. So, Nato B says, better know. If you're joining me for the first time, please give it a thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up this video. So, Roslyn says, yes, they do. The, uh, better no breakage with my fenugreek. Ah, yes. Excellent. So, Nato gives given us an update about her hair. Her breakage has slowed. Oh, wait, why is my thing shifting? Oh, it's about to fall down. There's less breakage since she started using the fenugreek spritz. I hope you all are on that spritz. I can't do without it now. It's like my... That is like my staple product now. Like when you talk about products, which I have a product video coming out. Lord, y'all. Y'all have so many requests. I'm fulfilling them, okay? I'm, I'm doing it. It's coming out. My product review, my product video of all the products I have and use. All right, Napture also says, I have a hair question. What do you normally do after you wash your hair? Do you always do African threading to fully stretch it or other types of style? Now, Napture 90, I have a video on how I stretch my hair. I have four ways on how I stretch my hair and you can check it out on my channel. So you can search on YouTube, ep 36 Day TV and stretching hair and the video will come up. Yo-Yo says, okay. Also, how often do you wear your hair out on a given week? Uh, maybe two or three times a, a week I have it out. Uh, Joy Davis says, I'm loving this. Your story is interesting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So Erica asked, how do you find products in China for your hair? Uh, as I said before, I have a, a video coming out on the products that I use in China. It's not difficult to find products. There is a web Chinese website where you call it's called Tao Bao T A O B A O. You can I think I think you can purchase from the US too. However, on that website there are products for natural hair. You just have to know what to search and how to search and you have to search in Chinese, of course. Uh, you can get almost anything you can find. There's also a natural hair group of women in China. It's like a community of women who help each other out. If you need anything hair-wise, you can ask them. They will always be there to help you, to direct you if you need something. But yes, you can find products here in China. I brought some products here with me as well. Uh, and I also don't use a lot of products. So I don't use a lot of products. The other thing too, if you do find something that you need over here, it's a little bit more expensive than if you were to bring it from the U.S. Is it hard being natural in China? I'm showing you what it's like being natural in China and it's not hard, it's easy. No, it depends on the person. Let me be honest about that. 
not everybody, I don't think everybody's experience would be like mine. So for me, because I do a lot of DIYs, I don't depend on store-bought products a lot. And that affects, I think that affects my experience. However, if you are a product junkie and you depend on products and you must have products to survive, then you will struggle, I think. Once you run out of the products that you brought, you will struggle, I guess. I think, but I think you will adapt. If you really are the type of person to adapt, I think you will. Some people bring suitcase, a suitcase full of all the products that they will ever need for the entire time that they're here. Here, here, in China. Angie says, has anyone just run up on you and touched your hair? Oh my gosh, yes. I said I would tell you this and I totally forgot. Okay, so hey, if you're joining me for the first time, give me a thumbs up. And also post in the comments and tell me if you're a newbie and where you're from so we can say hi to you. Oh, I forgot to tell you this story. So when I was in the first city that I lived in, my mother told you it was rural. I had got, I had found, I went walking and I was exploring this one day and I was looking and I found this uh, open air market and I went walking around. I was actually, back then I was vlogging. I took those vlogs down, but anyways, <laughs> I was vlogging. So I was doing a lot of video of the women in the marketplace and stuff. And I just, at one point, I was like, wait, I can't, you know, you feel someone's presence like up on you. And that's when I kind of slowly turned around and this woman was like in my hair. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? I felt like I, I didn't want to startle her. I didn't want to like jerk away. I just slowly like er, 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 back it off from her. <laughs> So yeah, that was my first encounter of, uh, uh, that was my first encounter of a Chinese person touching my hair or trying or attempting to touch my hair. And uh, I mean, I just like kind of laughed it off and smiled with her. I didn't know what she was saying in Chinese and I, and I backed away and I walked away. <laughs> I actually don't mind people touching my hair because they don't know what our hair feels like. And like, even when my students see my hair out, they're like, oh my gosh, your hair stretches. Like that is like a huge mind. That's mind blowing to them. That hair sh can stretch. They, they, don't, they don't understand it. They just can't comprehend that hair can stretch. They don't. So, so yeah, I have had an experience where someone they didn't run up on me, but <laughs> she was touching my hair. One of my friends, she's not a, she's actually American. She tried, it was so weird. We went to dinner and she was stretching her, like, you know, you're taking a yawn. And I was like, girl, you try to touch my hair. What do you want to do? She was like, yeah. And then she thought twice about it and she realized, no, maybe she shouldn't. <laughs> so Yo-Yo said, Rosalind, don't mean to chuckle, but that sounds so contrasty. Okay. So El Han said, ole, 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 ole. Hey, girl. Okay, so Amanda says, why you're, why, you, you're, sorry, your, your why you never had a relaxer video was so on point. Oh, that's good to hear. That's cool. I'm glad you all enjoyed that video. I enjoyed filming it. And Nato B says, yes, that aloe is a Merkel worker too. I'm working six little plants because I couldn't find a big one. Oh, talking about that, I found a link on Amazon for you guys for large aloe leaves which are much bigger, but there's not a plant, which I prefer that y'all get, of course, but I found a link for large aloe leaves because the plants that I linked to were tiny plants and I want y'all to get the really large ones, okay? All right, I'm trying to get to these comments, guys. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, Simone says she bought some maca, pow maca powder. How has it been for you? Really? Maca? You don't like the maca? I drink it in a glass of water. I roast it first because it's raw when you get it. And then I I mix it in a glass of water. I, I like it in a glass of water, warm water. Drink it. Or I put it in my smoothies. If your screen is freezing, refresh or close the app. If you're in the, in the YouTube app, close it and come back in. Or close your browser and come back in. How do you... Okay. Oh, what's my favorite Chinese cuisine? Talking about that. Oh, this should be a separate video. Like, oh my gosh, this video is like all over the place. Y'all, let me... Uh, the food is really good. The food is not anything like Western Chinese food. If you want to come to China and you like Chinese food in America, scrap all that you know. 
Because when you come to China, it's nothing like it. And then it depends on where you go. The food is totally different. I really want to start vlogging, y'all. But I need a new camera. Because my phone, I don't want to vlog with that. The battery dies too quickly. But anyway, so I want to start back vlogging because there's so many things I want to show y'all. And talk about now because I think it, I think China is a nice, a nice place to, to... Even if you don't plan to come, you can get to know it. Uh, okay. Hi, Anisha from Trinidad. Hello, hello, hello. But what's my favorite cuisine, you ask me? There's something called Jian Bing. It's like a wrap with like vegetables and oh, it's just so good. I have a video. I think I have a video on that on my, on my Instagram. Ife 360 TV. You can check out my Instagram. I'm really going to try to post some more on Instagram as well. So you can still get, still get a feel of China before, even though I'm not vlogging right now. So S. Marie says... I'm a new subscriber. Love your channel. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem, Joy. I see that. You retracted your answer. That's all right. Okay, so Span Spanarel says, I dyed my hair, regular dye. Now my hair is dry at the ends. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm not... I've seen so many things about people saying naturals talking about the experiences they've had with dyeing their hair. I will take that as a cautionary tale and I won't be dyeing my hair. I'm, go I'm good. Thank you. Mm -mm. Jovette says, good night, Ife. Miss you. Miss you too. For real, Jovette, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Spanel, use aloe vera on your oil. Okay, so Yo-Yo is giving Spanel some advice. How long have you been there for? Did you actually know? Mandarin before you arrived, and how is your fluency now? Shanice says, um, I've been here almost two years. I learned some Mandarin, so I learned. And they don't say Mandarin over here because they don't even know what the word Mandarin is. They say Chinese. I know some Chinese, uh, especially before I came. You can learn Chinese before you, you, can, you come, and I suggest you do. <laughs> However, you can still survive. You, especially if you know your numbers, you can negotiate. So if they tell you a price, you can bring it down and stuff. When, they, when you buy them, items you can know what they're saying when they tell you the prices the when you i learn the characters for food so because i like to eat and i want to go into a restaurant and be able to understand what the menu says because so most menus do not have english on it it's just the chinese characters and you once you learn the chinese characters you will be okay with regard to food especially um, my fluency is not good because i'm really not spending a lot of time uh I'm not I'm not spending time. I'm not saying I don't have time. I'm just not putting any work, which is Chinese. You need work. You need time to put any work to learn Chinese. All right. That's a little tangent. Sorry. I'm going to wrap this up in about five minutes, guys. I really don't want these live streams to be too long because I want those who want who rewatch. I don't want them to. I don't want to be too long for them. OK. Spano says. OK, 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 OK. You had two inches of breakage. Oh, wow. Okay, but it's Grimac now. She's using castor oil, biotin, fenugreek tablets, and it's even thicker than before. Okay, good. All right, you're giving your, each other ex, um, some advice. I'm loving that. Try Richard, newbie from Trinidad. I'm actually going to prepare my fenugreek spritz this, uh, this weekend. Yo, my stomach is growling. I'm getting hungry. Okay. Hey, tribe, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Hi, this is my first time watching your live stream, but I have been subscribed for a while. Good. And you're from Beaumont, Texas. Excellent. Thank you for joining the live stream for the first time. And thank you for subscribing. I love that. Eve, does climate there affect your hair any differently? Yes. Y'all, the summers are really hot. The winters are very cold. Uh, the, the, okay, I have it in, South, in Celsius. The... the Climate gets as cold as uh, it went. It's got as cold as seven minus seventeen degrees Celsius. You can convert that yourself to Fahrenheit. Uh, it gets as cold as minus seventeen degrees where I live now, and it gets as hot as it got as hot as thirty nine last week or week. Y'all, I wanted to die and very humid, very humid. So yes, it affects. Yes, it affects my hair, of course. Uh, my hair and my scalp was very dry the very first winter I was here. I didn't know how, because my first winter, I didn't know how to manage my hair and the dryness and it was too much. <laughs> she said, when she touched your hair, it reminded me of the scene in Karate Kid when she said, can I touch your hair? By the way, I'm using the maca powder in my smoothies and my coffee maca is really life-changing. 
I wouldn't lie to you. I told y'all maca is maca root powder is the bomb. Like it, it is life changing. It is like to put it simply. So if you haven't seen the maca video, search E Three Hundred and Sixty TV on maca. You will get your life. Okay, <laughs> literally get your life. People use that term, but no, you will literally get your life together. <laughs> All right. If you ch start using maca. It's called maca. I keep saying maca. All right. Simone says, I just put a spoonful of it in my water and it just tastes like Gatorade. You can put it in your, in your smoothies. Have you visited the Great Wall yet? No. I've been to Beijing, but not the Great Wall. Not yet, but I will. I will. Uh, Stacy, I love your videos, by the way. And I watched your video about never having a relaxer. I wish I had not even gotten relaxers, but my mom relaxed my hair. At the beginning of 12. Now, I don't want to put down anyone who has had their hair relaxed. Because I think that's all our parents knew. Or some parents knew. And that was that's all. They didn't know how to take care of hair. So they couldn't pass on that tradition of taking care of hair. Maybe I should have mentioned that in the video as well. You can't pass down something you didn't know, you know. So, we know now. A lot of us know now. Our generation knows now. And we have the opportunity to change the narrative for the future generations. I'm not preaching and I'm not trying to preach, but that's how I feel. Amanda, does the thought of dyeing your hair ever slip your mind? Nope, it does not. It does not cross my mind. Because a lot of people complain about the damage that it causes. I am not trying to damage my hair. I think the amount of hair loss I've gone through is enough of, it was enough trauma <laughs> that I've gone through. I have a video coming out, coming out, y'all, I have so many videos, oh god, I do, filmed, I have like 10 videos filmed, y'all, they come in, they come in, and just to edit them, they come in, there's a thought of dyeing your hair, All right, mm, I love your lives, thank you, you're welcome, just started following you on Instagram, <laughs> nice, I know, I need to, I was posting so, I was posting so consistently for like two months, and these last two, three weeks, I just haven't been on Instagram at all, sorry, but I'll be back. Al Hunt says, just, okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So Desi girl says, you sound, you sound like a newbie. Can fixing your insulin help your hair fall? Um, remember, I am not a doctor. I'm not going to give anyone doctor's advice. Perhaps it might help. She says she has PCOS. I think once you get your insulin levels in check, which Moringa helps. If you get onto Moringa, y'all, I'm helping y'all get your life. Maca powder, Moringa, y'all get it, man. Let's get our health in check. So Moringa definitely helps with insulin levels and I don't see why it wouldn't help with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So Simone, the top of my hair will not catch up with the nape of my neck. I think it might be because of perms. I used to get, but I have been natural for three years now. Oh, wow. Give your hair some, give it a little bit more time. Give it a little bit more time. Your hair is super thick. Oh, okay, so minus 70, 17 degrees is 1.4 Fahrenheit. Is that cold for y'all? Is that considered really cold for y'all? Like, I don't know. Maca is everything. I think maca tinctures. All right. How much do you take daily? Take of what? Uh, maca? One teaspoon. You start off with one teaspoon and then you go to two teaspoons eventually. Start with one because it's very powerful. Your energy would spike. Everything would spike. You and your it's, it's, everything spikes. Like my energy goes to the roof with maca. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so I've reached the end of the comments. Whew, that was a lot of comments, y'all. Okay, Joy says I take I take what? I take mine in smoothies. I take about one tablespoon. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, take maca in the morning. That's why I, t I take it in the morning so that I will be able to sleep. If you take that in the afternoon, good luck. You, you're going to be awake for the rest of who knows when. <laughs> Just joking. But it keeps you awake. It keeps you alert. Watch now. You're killing me here with laughter. Training to the bone. <laughs> L says, they see right. Um, Elle is also saying, oh, I forgot to tell you, I've got two Moringa plants. 
Girl, I'm a real super good woman, yes. Yes, get your plants. Oh, Moringa grows very easily in a, in a tropical climate and very quickly. Y'all, if it could grow here, where I live is not tropical, it's more temperate. But if it could grow where I'm living now, who I was throwing seeds everywhere. Simone also says, yes, my mom permed my hair in elementary school. Then I got educated on natural hair and in the seventh grade, I told my mom I had a chop, big chop after I was forced to transition for so many years. And I, wa I went to Great Clips and they... Oh. Okay, so somebody asked me, what time is it in China? It, oh, the time is 10.47 a.m. And y'all, and this is where I will wrap up the stream because y'all are super awesome. You have me pumped. I'm so excited. I love live streams now and it seems like you all too you all love it too. Every Friday night at 10 p.m. I am on this live stream with y'all. I'm going to be in a different place to next week, so you may not see me in this place next week. You'll see me somewhere else, but you still see me for the live stream. Alright? So it's 10:47 a.m. here. You're so welcome. I enjoy these live streams. I enjoy y'all. My 360 day life crew, my 360 day family. I love when you all come to these live streams. And those who watch the replay, I love you for watching it too. And I'm sorry when you miss out, you need to put on your notifications. You need to, you need to come back every Friday night so that we can chat, we can vibes, we can vibes, as Trini say. We say, do Trini still say vibes? Oh God, y'all. I miss Trinidad. <laughs> All right, yeah, so everyone is saying their goodbyes. Angie says, thank you so much for having, have a good day. Thanks for doing this. Does maca also help balance your testosterone levels? It's supposed to, it's supposed to. Uh, I think I can, I think, I think, I think, I think I'm loving this. You're loving this, right? I'm loving these live streams. Uh, You'll still say vibes, oh gosh, thank you. Lord, I'm losing my Trini lingo now. <laughs> Maka is said to naturally like, regulate your hormones, so it should balance your progesterone. If if anything is too high or too low, it's supposed to like bring it into equilibrium. All right. So you all have a great night, have a great weekend, have a good a good time this week, y'all. Let's do this. Let's have a let's let's mm, let's go for it. I don't know why I'm pumped like this. I don't know. I had my iodine this morning, so I'm like mm, ready to go. I'm raring to go. You're still posting. You're loving the live streams. Okay, I have to go now though. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. I'm hungry. <laughs>